Damas y caballeros. Niños y niñas. Bienvenidos a Pega Magan desde más fuerte del mundo. Lo que tú dices. ¡Por qué la pasa! Hoy nos venimos a hacer, a dar educación, vinimos hoy, a dar educación. Hoy vinimos a traerle a ustedes lo que usted necesita para que mejore su vida. Sí, para que ponga su bolsillo como debe de estar. Y nosotros tenemos la persona ideal para mejorarle su crédito. El tipo trabaja o es dueño de Credit Mobile. Oh, ¿quién más? ¿De quién estamos hablando? Tenemos aquí a Marlen Peña. Hey, love it, love it. What's up, brother? What's going on, brother? How you doing, brother? That, man. I love that. I got a lot of energy off of that, man. Let's go, baby! Woo! We try, we try. Let's do it. Uh, you know? All right. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to control my N words. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's try, let's try my N words. I, I, I try. I try. I'm gonna try harder. If not, I'm gonna have to believe it up there because a lot of editing for me. I'm not saying that word today. Exactly right. All right. So, um, <laughs> yes, vamos a traer ustedes hoy um uh, a lot of uh information pertaining to mm -hmm. something that. There's a lot of misconceptions about how it works, where it comes from, why they use certain numbers. I, I personally got a whole lot of questions for myself, right? Um, but most importantly, we're going to speak about uh, Marlon's book, which is uh, Breaking Barriers of Credit Perception, que también se encuentra en inglés y en español. Y en francés. Woo! If your English is not very good looking, lo tenemos en bonjour y lo en tenemos... En bonjour y en hola, por si acaso. En bonjour y en hola. Um, Primeramente, antes que como comenzamos con el, con el libro, Marlon, who are you? Where are you from? ¿Qué yeah, tú haces? Yeah, Habla de nosotros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, definitely. Yo. Where, where, you know, who am I? Marlon Peña, New York, born Queens. What's up, Queens? Mom and dad from the Dominican Republic. Came out here, you know, back in the 80s. And of course, you know, uh, had me and my sister. And, uh, you know, shout out to my sisters. Of course, you know, I love you. And, uh, yeah, you know, grew up there in Corona, Queens all my life, basically. And, uh, You know, my cousins were really like my brothers because I grew up around a lot of girls, ladies. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of like hard, you know, um, trying to be cool with them, not in that kind of way, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but uh, thankfully, I have my cousins that kind of like made me who we we are. We used to, we used to um, watch that movie, uh, The Sandlot. You know, oh, The Sand Oh, that's a very good movie. movie, right? So I had uh, my uncle who used to be like in his 40s at the time. And, you know, my dad wasn't really around that much. He, like, he would be a workaholic. He was never really there. Yeah, so yeah. I had my uncle there and my cousins. So he used to be like, yo, let's get the baseball gloves and let's all go to the park. So we used to go to this <laughs> senior park. It's called Old Folks Park back in Corona. A lot of people that are from there know what I'm talking about. So we used to go there, invade the park. The maintenance guys always opened the gate, never told us that they never, never called police on us, and they let us play. Yeah, yeah, they even used to watch the old people, you'd be like, Shout out to the maintenance guys. Yeah, they used to be there just watching us play baseball, and we would play literally every other day without having cell phones and beepers and all that. So it's like, yo, come outside. Multiple the wind. Yup. And we used to call all the homies in the area that used to go to school with us, and yeah. they used to just meet up with us in the park, and that's what we used to do. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that was now, you know what, I think you, you, you spoke a lot about like, of. Uh, a tip, not, I don't say typical, but yeah, yeah. something that a lot of people who, especially from the Dominican Republic, can relate to, right? Where, you know, you played a lot outside in that time, right? Mm -hmm. um, you were surrounded by a lot of women, right? I mean, yeah. both of us, right? Like, sure. we have, we have all three, odds. three odds. But the thing is that with us, like, the people around us, our age were all boys. We had the, we had the opposite. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, especially for the Dominican um, community, right? Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of misconceptions when it comes to, like, you know, Uh, credit and you know and w w what's credit and what how does it work but my first question is is what what is credit so credit basically is a three-digit number right it, it identifies uh, what you have on your social basically on your your background of you know it starts with your name it starts with your address it starts with obviously your social security number your date of birth, and, and that basically defines something on the consumer side, the consumer report. And so the number is under a, a different category called FICO, right, uh, Fair Isaac Corporation. And so, uh, you know, it merges all together because it doesn't work in sync in, in one line, right? So basically, that's how banks are able to determine now where you have your data, your, your, your history. So how do you build something from scratch? Um, very simple, guys. You build something from scratch from either getting a, a, a starter builder credit. You know, there's a lot of them. I can name like three of them. Self-lender, kickoff, um, 
And you also could do like self. Uh, okay, self but but, credit, but, 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 but pregunta numero uno, pregunta numero uno. Yeah. Right. You you spoke about you know credit being a three digit number. Mm -hmm. Yo siendo una persona bruta, right? Estúpidos. Uh, right. Just for the sake for the sake of argument here. Yeah. Because I'm actually pretty smart. But just for the sake of argument <laughs> here, right? Yeah, him. Why why does credit start at three hundred and not at zero? Well, that's the way it generally starts for everyone. You know, it's not like something that we just like oh. We're all gonna start somewhere at three, just because yeah. three is a cool number to start. Okay. Um, and then from there, obviously, but the funny thing about three is like you're not even gonna see three. It's, sometimes it's gonna say uh, no information, no data, code four. These are like the terms that they use. Mm -hmm. And what and what do the, what do those terms mean? Uh, basically, you can't really look up nothing. Like you you, you have no his, historical. There's no, there's no credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're like, you're just like hollow, like a hollow glass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now. The highest number you can have in your credit card is an eight fifty, I believe, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Now you spoke about uh, what is it? A starter credit? Yeah, the starter builders. What, yeah. what is that, and what, how how do you start that? What are the options that we could use to get there? Uh, the starter building is, is always fun for me, like to establish or reestablish for those who have messed up in the past. So um, you know, I, I would give like again suggestions where people can start with no credit background checks. Um, you know, no money down. Some some of them don't require it, and sometimes sometimes all you got to do is really pay an admin fee. And it's like a small fee. It's nothing crazy. Uh, trust me, it'd be cheaper than buying, uh, you know, um, what do you call it, like a combo meal with burger and fries. Okay. Believe me when I tell you that. Like, it's, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they have, the best thing about it is, like, it's long-term of what it's going to benefit you to, to excel, mm -hmm. to propel where you want to eventually take your credit to. But, again, it's also a growing thing. Like, it takes time to season. Like, when you water a plant, it's not going to just grow overnight. It's gonna take time to you know become with the ways the ways that go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's a problem, man. No, I don't know how many years. No, I don't. And I'm stuck on this. I'm stuck on this mm -hmm. six eighty nine. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck on six eighty nine. I don't know how long I've been on six eighty nine for. To be honest, like six twenty. Probably I've been in six eighty nine for maybe like around six seven months. I think now. Okay. Right, and it, it just hasn't moved. Mm -hmm. Right. Why do you think it hasn't moved? And how does somebody who is in that same situation kind of make a difference in their in their credit line? Yeah, so I mean, it plays a lot of different factors. So now we talk about, you know, um, factor number one could be your debt ratio. What what's your number like uh, as far as your total debt? Mm. And because of that, if it's that, a high number, that is explained. There you go. It's done. That could be the red flag right there. Without even doing anything, you know, and as long as you bring the numbers down, like they say, the threshold. There is a threshold bar, by the way. What is that? And so in the book, I talk about it. It's between one and five percent. That's the real number you want to keep it under. You don't, you hear about 30%. Yo, oh, yeah, the banks say, oh, yeah, do 30%. Okay, that's enough to get you over a borderline. But if you really want to see it, you know, move up the ladder, you have to bring it down between 1% and 5% or whatever you owe. Okay. Your overall total is, debt credit cards. Or is, it, like is it what you owe against what you can earn that they go for? Like what your value and net worth it's going for? How does that work? How do you so, know your percentage? Yeah, so basically, is the cool thing about these, uh, you know, credit monitoring services, you got simulators. So like, you know, you slide a bar and it'll tell you how much you spent, and then when it shows the number, the dollar amount, it shows you how much your points are gonna drop. Mm. Like the thing is incredible. I love that because it's like again, we go back to the whole AI stuff, and that's pretty cool. So now it's making us us as human lazier, but it's making us even say like, okay, now we get it. We're more accessible to information. Yeah, it's just so cool. It's so easy because I didn't when I first started doing this, it wasn't like that. And I'm talking about I want to go by back in 2018, yeah, 2018, 2017. Mm. Started really looking more into this kind of thing. Mm. But again, we didn't have that much good up to date information that was accessible and easy to actually you know process it. You know, to go through the, uh, the credit credit. This might services. be a dumb question, but I think they're gonna like it. Um, why wasn't it accessible back in the day? Uh, because the features wasn't that great. I mean, the guys who were running the whole, I guess, online services at the time weren't doing a much of a great job of doing, you know. Really well, bad job. I mean, think about it, right? You know what I mean? like, so why is it now they start implementing more features into these things. Well, you do you, okay, so you, this is me. This is right. just being. This is just me being negative, right? Like, yeah. if it's a set of information that I have and you don't have. Yeah. Now you need to pay me to get that information, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You see what I'm bidding at? Yeah. So it's kind of like one of those things. Um, right. You know, one thing about the movie, the uh, the Wall Street movie, not the one with, uh, uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, it's the other one from uh, the original? Michael Douglas. Yeah. Okay. Man, listen, one of the key things I learned in this movie, and I still stuck with it today, it's part of like my my thing that I, I, I resonate with. Mm. Uh, the commodity is, uh, information is as good as commodity. Mm. Basically, like your information is money. It's key, it's currency. Yeah, it is true. You know what I mean? So anything with information, as long as you have the right information, not the shit information. Yeah. 
it. But you have the right information, guess what? Yeah, it's going to take you places. Equals to money, yeah. Believe me. Equals to money. That's dope. Yeah. Now, okay, but but no, man. No, no, no. una pregunta de la deuda que no se puede borrar. Ah, yeah. La deuda que no se puede borrar. Ustedes saben qué deuda yo tengo. Atención a todos los que dicen que conocen lo que se llama FASPA. The un, Undeletable Debt. La que era Sally May y otra vaina ahora. ¿Cómo que se llama ahora? Eh, ese yo. Tiene otro nombre ahora. Eh, what, what is somebody supposed to wow. do about the college loan debt? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Because every other, so much. every other debt you could erase yeah. from your credit. Yeah. Except for that one. I mean, and that's your biggest debt. Of course, man. That's a huge one, too. Um, and that's only because the way it is. Again, you know, we go back to what, what is the student loan. So the student loans is obviously, you know, it's, it, it's an installment loan. It's what, obviously, students acquire for, for funding to, you know, get into school. And, you know, all these different uh, educational programs they, they're getting involved with. Some of them are private. Some of them, obviously, are federal. So it all depends, but they'll work the same way, in a way, right? So... Now you have all this thing going on with their student loan forgiveness, right? I'm sure you guys heard of it, uh, very familiar. Now, there's, <laughs> it's like a, a political game, honestly, because you hear good things about it one um, couple months and then you hear bad things about it, like it's not going anywhere. And it's like, oh, now we have a standstill, we have to hold on, Supreme Court and all this. And it, again, it's all politics stuff at the end of the day. But what is it really doing for somebody? It's just holding somebody up for the majority of the part. Yeah, you, you want to get to school, you want to graduate, you want to become a master or something or, you know, a bachelor degree, whatever it is. You know, you was in the fraternity. You know, yeah, yeah. my guy, man. Yo, <laughs> wait, wait, I thought you were gonna shout your college out, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to Ram, but I got a, I got a hefty sixty something k, uh, right there on the floor. Right, right, right. right. I got fifty k. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So now, you know, what would you say is like the top three things someone can do to fix mm -hmm. their credit instantly? Wow. All right. So the first thing is definitely pull up the report see what's wrong with it, right? So there's going to be discrepancies. Not every credit report is perfect, and that's very true. Uh, very rarely we see a perfect credit report. I'm talking about 100% lethal, you know what I mean? And um, there's always flaws. There's always errors. There's, for example, you know, when you have an account that shows you it, it's open on one date, uh, let's just say September 1st, 2023 or something like that, some, some got open, Capital One. On the other side, there's three agencies, right? TransUnion, Equifax, Experian. They all work independently. They don't work together. So they, uh, on the report, is going to say it's open on the, on the 1st. On another company, is going to say it's open on the 23rd. It's, another one's going to say it's open on the 15th. That's not matching, guys. Those are errors right there that you can challenge. Feel mm -hmm. me? So, like, when you have those little things right there, boom, you bring to the attention of, obviously, these agencies and dispute them. Why? Because it's not matching. It's supposed to be all matching. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the status of it, whether well, you were late, hopefully not, If you're late, because things do happen, life happens. I always talked about it. I talked about it in my book, how you can go around certain late payments. Who to contact, for example. You can actually even contact the bank CEO. Yes, it's true. Some called LinkedIn, guys. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I kind of get too much sauce there, guys. Oh, man. Nah, it's all good. You can have it. But yeah, LinkedIn um, is definitely a good way to reach out to a lot of these people because they, they have real emails. This is not like Fugazi stuff, guys. This is real, legit people that work for these companies, mm -hmm. for these banks. And, and uh, same thing with, uh, you know, reaching out to, obviously customer service is not going to help you much, but it doesn't hurt to try. Because sometimes like, it does happen. I had a lady, believe it when I tell you, five late payments during COVID, contacted uh, three times, uh, either the, I think it was the CEO or the CFO, one of them, and they actually forgave her. And they already gave her the approval that they're going to make the changes to remove these five late payments. Mm. It's a miracle, guys. Because normally you don't hear about five late payments coming off like that. Yeah. But unless you have a perfect excuse, guys. Then it's on, you know, everything's on your side. Mm. Okay. You know now, you know, what would you say is the the most important reason why you should have good credit, right? Because, like, I don't know. I, I'm a person who wins a lot of cash, have a lot of cash yeah. money. No, no, I have a bunch of Oh, shit. That's me. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, it's okay. They, these have audio, right? Yeah, we, we'll, we'll work it out. Hi, everyone. We sound a little bit better now. Um, so, right, what would you say is... Um, damn, what was I going with it? What was I saying? Uh, have good credit. Um, yeah, what's the reason to have good credit, right? Because let's say, for example, right, someone who wins a lot of cash, right, but doesn't necessarily have, like, a check that, you know, co goes into their bank account, right? How does that person then kind of manage to have good credit when, you know, I guess... I don't know, I'm asking you, I kind of don't even know where I'm going with the question, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? 
And so they big on cash, but not on credit. Basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I got cash. I pay everything right. cash. How how does that person build credit? Wow. You know, to pay everything cash, I get it on one end. You don't want to report certain things. Paper trail, we call it. In a way, it's kind of good, guys. Like, believe me when I tell you that. And and the reason why cash is not going to benefit you, you want to hear something so cool? Um, so the other day, you know, I'm buying something for, uh, for my son. And this is like, the true story. It's not an example. This actually really happened. And I use something called Upside. I'm sure you heard of it, right? It's like where you purchase gas, get the cash back there. So I'll show you, I'll show you a trick on that. I get cash back on something called the Navy Federal Credit Card, right? So I get 1.5 for every gas purchase. I get a cash back also so on Upside on the app. So I get double cash back on one shot just using the credit card, right? So what happens towards the end of the year? Holidays is coming. I, get, I, I mount all the cash up summary. I cash it out to my PayPal. Here you go, free Christmas gift that I could have paid out of my pocket. But thanks to the cash back rewards that I leveraged from that, I was able to get you know, my kid something nice. Wait, 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 wait. That must have flowed de nuevo. That must have flowed de nuevo. double cash back depending yeah. on how you use it. Yeah. So when he do- uses his card throughout the year, he's yeah. getting cash back the entire year that he's not using. He's not touching that. When it comes to Christmas, yeah. he got... But, but, but let's say he got $500. Let's, yeah. say, let's say $500. Yeah. He got $500... For Christmas, yeah. that wasn't his money yeah. that they just Free gave money, him a cash baby. back. Okay, Come otra, on. otra, otra. Oh, oh. But you see, with cash, you can't do that with cash. Okay, because okay. you already gave up your cash. The credit card, you play with it like that. You start leveraging over the t- you know course of the months. You build history. You get cash back. You look good on paper. The paper trail is looking beautiful, guys. You are building a beautiful resume without even knowing it. Pero lo mío, chequea. Yo soy bruto. 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 Right. When you hear this cash back thing, right, right. Like, where does this cash back go to? Where can I find it? Right? What credit card should yeah. I be using? Yeah. Like, what are what are these platforms that are gonna allow me to have this double cash back? Like, yeah. so that someone who doesn't know, right, can be like, yo, okay, so next time I want to open a credit card, this is what I should use. Well, That's what I should look for. Yeah, exactly. So you have different, you know, companies, uh, banks, of course, uh, that actually do offer you certain introductory. It mm. could be like the three month bonus. Mm. If you hit a certain limit, you get uh, even you know a higher rate of what the average person is not going to make once they already become a member. Um, so you always got to look for those things. Like for example, Chase sometimes will give you that. Chase is a good bank, you know. I like Chase, uh, Chase Inc. and uh, Signature, all these uh, things they have. Um, so then you also have uh, what do you call it? Uh, City, City, uh, City Bank. They do uh, double cash rewards. Uh, American Express just really works on points for the most part. But if you travel a lot, if you go to DR a lot, you know, <laughs> wherever you go, yeah. it makes sense, bro. Like, if you really want to be in a lounge looking like a five-star player in the lounge, you pay for that annual credit card and you sit in one of those lounges, man. I'm telling you, you go, before you even catch that flight, you're going to be getting all the free meals, you know, all the free stuff. You're going to hang out with some nice, you know, nice casual people there, you know. And uh, you'll be able to, I guess, rub elbows with some good people, you know, that you might not want to network and do business with. Who knows? Yeah. And then eventually catch a flight. Mm. So, like, those things come with those great perks, but that's only if you travel a lot. If you don't, scratch that off your list, and let's work Let's work on the cashback, and the cashback will be either, um, you know, Capital One will give it to you, no problem, or uh, Citibank, uh, no problem. Of course, Chase, they'll also do that. So, most of them have similarities, PNC Bank, uh, Navy Federal, you know, and so just, just you want to tap in where, and my suggestion to start off, where you don't have to pay an annual fee, mm. you know, save that money, and just use the card to your maximum, you know, Potentially, you want to use it for obviously always pay down or have auto pay, yeah, and so you won't forget. And then eventually, just have a you know a good couple months of uh, basically working with them as becoming a, a loyal you know customer. And uh, throughout the months, you know, we could say also that cash back cash won't do for you. Hey, um, I need a credit line increase. Uh, you know, I would like to pur- purchase something big, and for the limit I got is not going to be enough. Um, I want to run the credit today. Okay, no problem. So then they'll tell you, okay, you know, send the information over the phone. You could do it online. Um, and then, and this after three months, after four, three months, you, you start building a little track record. Boom. From $1,000 to $5,000 credit limit, let's just say, throw it out there. And then eventually, yeah, you know, you can play with a little bit more money. So, now, okay. So, so that, that makes it fun. You know, all right. But, like but, 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 all right. So I got a credit line uh, on my Capital One. I believe it's like around seven right now. Yeah. Right. Um, how can I increase that number? Right. So <laughs> should my moves be mm-hmm. calling and being like, hey, um, I'm trying to make a big purchase. Mm-hmm. Should it be, hey, um, I have a higher salary now. Yeah. Should it be, um, 
I don't know, like I've made all my payments the last year. Can I increase this? Like, right? What what, yeah. what would be the ideal situation for somebody to increase their credit line? Oh and should and should I increase my credit line? Yeah, always. I always say it helps. You know why? Because like you just said, right? So if you stuck at six eighty nine, let's go back to that part. If you stuck at six eighty nine and you have that seven hundred credit limit and you're not really seeing the yourself graduate to to move up the ladder anywhere, that's could be one of the reasons why you're stuck there. And so because of that, you want to eventually graduate to say, you know what? I need to double it up. Instead of seven, I want 1500 now. And then remember, so you play with the 1500 for a little bit and see how you manage. And obviously, they'll see how you manage when you come back and call them again and be like, now I want 5000 Right? I'm, I'm okay with fifteen. Fifteen is doing it. But, you know, inflation, cost of living, the way things are going. Yeah, and I'm starting to use my car more because I'm getting more pleasure out of it. Okay, no problem. I want $5,000 credit limit. Toma. Be the, be the negotiator. Be the king of the negotiator. Or the queen for the ladies, you know, if y'all hear me. But uh, I'm telling you, look, this is this is exactly what it comes down to. Like, it's the same thing with car dealers, you know. You got to be smart how to play cards uh, when, when it comes to, like, you know, doing what you're going to do. And now, fun thing about my book, if you really look at it in the back of the book, what it has there. Try, uh, uh, there you go, chess. baby, let's go. We all playing chess in this thing, man. We got to know how to make our moves. So this was no mistake. Shout out to uh, my guys who did the book, the covers and stuff like that, you know. So shout out to those guys, man, hooking me up. But yeah, you know, I wanted to put something visual for people to understand how this chess game in real life is really going and, and how we also day to day trying to get by around these things and obviously not understanding these things. And not, it's not because of ignorance, it's because of lack of education. Mm. That's it. And again, who, who can we blame when our parents didn't know any better? Exactly. You know, so I'm glad this generation, like, you know, guys like myself, the real guys like myself out there, the authentic guys that are out here just, you know, really putting this out here to, to let everybody know, like, look, there's ways to do it. There's ways around it. There's always going to be a solution. It's all about getting the right information. You know what I mean? And, and obviously, you know, we go back to that book. So, you know, it, it definitely starts, it starts there, baby. Let's go. All right, let's, yeah. go, in, let's, go, let's go into the book. Yeah. We, we asked them a lot of credit questions, right? Let's go into the book. What, what made you um, write this book? What made you get into writing this book? Um, wow. You know, I felt something passionate about the people I was helping along the way for the last, uh, a little bit before COVID. You know, um, last, I want to say five years now. And, you know, I first started with family. I started helping them for free. El primo. Hey, hey, el manito. Manito, ya lo sabe. I did it under, under the arm, like we say for them. You know, it's all love, baby. And uh, and then they started referring me to a lot of people. And ya de ahí como que se, se fue. It took off, you know. And then after that, you know, I started getting a lot of people. I started meeting and hearing their stories. It was just crazy, you know, whether it was divorce, the child support stuff, whatever it was. I heard all kinds of stories, guys. You name it. Top of the line stuff. Um, and, and then basically, like, when I was able to, um, you know, just have consultation calls time and time again, right, with a lot of individuals. I'm talking about six days, seven days a week sometimes. And I'm listening to these stories like, wow, it sounds like almost the same questions everybody asking me. Now I got to make a book because man, it just makes everything easy for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You? I'm getting the, F, the FA, FAQs, you know, daily, man. I'm like, okay, I got you. I said, you know what? Now I'm going to start marking down the most, most accurate questions that they're asking me. Like 10 out of 10 stuff, I started putting it all in the book. Why? Because that's exactly what they're going to ask me per consultation calls, mm. which my consultations are free, right? I don't charge for that. Nice, 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 nice. What, what, what would you say are the top three uh, FA, FAQs that you get? Frequently asked questions. Wow. Um, of course, the 850 one comes around a lot. So I talk about the difference uh, between Vantage and FICO scores. Uh, you know, Credit Karma uses um, something called Vantage Score 3.0. And then obviously for the premium, you know, something called FICO on FICO.com, it's a different set of score. And they both different, they work differently. Um, the algorithms is not ex exactly the same. So 99% of the lenders actually look through FICO, mm. not through Vantage. So everybody know should know that when they're trying to get that car or the house, they're not going to look at no credit karma numbers, unfortunately, guys. Um, they're going to look at the FICO numbers, which mm. is more like authentic numbers. Okay, and this is... This how, do, how, do, but how do we see uh, the, that number? Not the credit karma, because that's the one I get. That's right. the one I see. How do we see the actual number? Yeah, so the actual number you see, uh, there's a website, of course, Experion. Um, you can go there, Experion.com. You can also uh, purchase the premium package, which will be like twenty seven ninety nine or something like that. And you'll get it on all three, uh, Equifax, TransUnion, Experion. Mm. And obviously, there'll be like a monthly subscription thing. Now, if you don't want to keep it, you could just always cancel any time. Yeah. Okay, with no, no contract. Okay. Uh, dumb King, uh, pregunta, King of Credit Wise. Credit Wise is under, um, it's Capital One, but it's under TransUnion. On the TransUnion. Yeah, TransUnion is the only one that runs it. 
But it's okay. on, on the back to score 3.0, a.k.a. Credit Commerce friend. No, porque ese, ese, ese que yo sé, ese yo que yo conozco, ese, porque se te la cuenta, pero, tú me entiendes, pero, cuando yo abro, wey, hey, se movió el número, subió, bajó. Eh, eh, sí, otra, pregunta, sí. otra pregunta otra pregunta tú when you when you check your credit on through those uh, websites does it affect your credit that's a good question so I get that a lot and the thing is that no it doesn't and that's only because you're doing a soft review now if you were to be applying for credit for example vamos para Credit Pro One a meter la aplicación no boom you get it in now they're gonna run your credit it's gonna be considered a hard pull mm. for every hard pull you get yeah you do a, a, it's a reduction of points it could be minus two Anywhere between two to four points mm. per inquiry that are, are being added in your credit profile. Pregunta entonces, esta es una pregunta muy importante. Cuando tú vas a comprar un carro, right. que tú le dices al tigre, manito, tengo dos mil pesos para el carro, y el tigre te dice, no te apures, you're going to get approved. Yeah. No es verdad. Y esos tigres comienzan a. Fuop, fuop, mm -hmm. Whoop, peso, and they run peso, your credit. Peso siete, siete and they run, exactly. They run your credit six, eight times, right? Yeah. You as an you you as a, a as buy, a first of all as, as a, a client, buyer you don't know exactly yeah, you as a client you know. right how can one you avoid the amount of times that your your credit gets ran right and mm -hmm. is there some sort of law that protects you from someone at a dealership right running overrunning your 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 yeah, credit excessively of course uh, yeah there is a law for it it's all under. Um, The uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act. That's exactly what gives us, every consumer, each and every, every one of us, the right to dispute mm -hmm. these kind of things. When there's uh, abuse, excessive, excessive kill, of course, unnecessary excessive stuff being done like that, or uh, unintentionally. And you can dispute it for those reasons, of course. Yeah. There's laws that stand behind that for us to, as consumer to dispute it and fight it. And we do get them. We do get them off because they got to prove it to us now. Was this really valid what this person did or not? Right? So, yeah. No, you didn't authorize it. Okay, I didn't authorize it. So now you, that's your dispute right there. Mm. You stand on that until they delete it. So now, I, have, okay. I, have done, I have seen that. Now, going back to that first thing you said, the interesting thing, I give people exactly the secret how to go around that. Ready to hear something, guys? Something cool? So whether you're banking with your, your favorite bank, you have a banking relationship, personal checking or whatever, uh, or be even business credit, right? Uh, business uh, a checking account. It's mm. cool. Guys, what you need to do is have that bank, the one that you're doing your banking relationship with, give you a pre-approval for a car loan. That's it. Don't have all these... Uh, bring that back. Bring that back. So, so we, get the pre-approval from your from, own from bank. From my own yeah, bank. Yeah, 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 so yeah. once you get that pre-approval, yep. they know and the number you that you got approved. You go and you have the credit. number. This yep. is the number that this my bank gave me. For 20,000, 30,000, whatever it is it says in that letter, let's go. Mm. Because at the end of the day, they will abuse people without knowing, you know, what people should know. So, so that's okay. So game. that that's 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 what, that's, that's a good that's a, that's one. A, that's a, oh yeah. That's, that's a good one. 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 See, because because if not, if if you are a car dealer, they're gonna pre they're gonna try to pre-approve your every bank yeah. in existence, yeah. so you could get approved or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now that that if you go to your bank, your bank is gonna tell you you only get approved for ten thousand, bro. Yeah. Like you're gonna have to find a used car, use this ten thousand, get it, get that used car. You can't get a new one. Exactly. Type shit. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Now, um, going back to your to your book, um, what's uh, what's the barrier, um, <laughs> you know, of credit, right? Like, what 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 is what is the what is the what would you say is the main barrier that we need to break, um, when it comes to that? Wow, the barrier is definitely uh, knowing number one. The information mm. because biggest barrier you know i met people that work at a bank guys when don't I had to know. Go open my business checking account let me tell you something everybody at the teller said i don't know nothing about credit i need your business card it's like what you work at the bank you're handling other people's money how you yeah. don't know about credit yeah it makes no sense no that's breaking right there the barrier. that's breaking the ice right there for a lot of guys that don't know mm. but meanwhile they're handling thousands or millions whatever it is you know of these consumers or businesses and they know nothing about credit I'm telling you guys, they have they have true, credit. They they, they run credit and they don't know about credit, yeah. which is insane. I'm telling you, that's the, that's the breaking of the barrier and that's the breaking of the ice. That's the breaking of everything because it starts there. It really does. And again, if I didn't know what I know today, I would not be sitting here with you guys telling you what I know. Mm. And I know a lot, but I don't want to, you know, do too much of those. Yeah. Guys, you know? <laughs> but man, this guy gave us too much information. It's hard to keep up with Marlon, but. You know, I just try to give you stuff that you can pick up on, a, on you know, stuff that's going to be okay, informational for you to say, you know what, I can use this and I comply with what he's saying. Obviously, you know, 
what he's saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I heard this before, but I never did it. I never tried. You know, people are scared sometimes to do things. They I'm a, it, you know? I'm gonna tell you guys something. Yeah. Hit up Marlon, bro. Hit my man's up. He gonna let you know the info. You know, well, you said that your consultations are not. Free, you don't. He, it's free, bro. Just call him up for the console. You know what I'm saying, M- Marlon? Uh, Hit him up. Most importantly, where, where, where can people contact you, right? Um, and how can like uh, they get your services? Um, si si lo quieren contactar al Marlon, ¿verdad? Is Marlon Marlon M A R L O N at K R E D I T M O G U L dot com. That's the email. Hit him up there. That's the the actual cool email. You know, hit that one up. Forget about the Gmail. Hit that one up. Promise me. <laughs> I promise you. Hit that one up. He'll he'll contact you better on that one. If you want to f- call him, your phone person at nine two nine three two. My bad. Nine two nine three two three nine two one seven. I said nine two nine three two three nine two one seven. Tírenle al mío. Que te va a poner ready. Llévate de mí. Llévate de mí. Yo no tengo crédito bueno, ya te mi quizá yo le tire también al mío, para ver si me ayuda. Normal. El nombre de él, Marlon Peña. Dominicans. Es con él la vaina. Marlon, ahora para, just to, to wrap up here, right? Um, what would you say is the main reason why somebody should get this book? Uh, well, if they're looking to buy a house, you know, it's definitely going to show you the ropes. You know, I did a, I did something before where I would do like a presentation. Sometimes I'll do like, you know, live person presentations or video zooms uh, talking about the road. I call it the roadmap to how to get to the house. You know, So I did it myself. So I'm a true testimony about it. And I, I also share that with a lot of people that don't have that education. And again, you know, I also know a lot of realtors and, you know, mortgage guys in the industry. However, it always starts with how's your credit? That's always the number one question. Then they talk about the income and all that good stuff. Yeah. But you know, we always are, I'm always that first first base guy. You know, you gotta go to first base before you go to second. Come on. Right. 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 So right. let's go. Yeah. You know. So uh, I have everybody running to me first. And it's like, yeah, I, I'm that guy. I gotta show you how how you do it. The book is gonna talk about that. Um. Also, same thing with the car what we just talked about. How many increases? What's the real number on the inquiries that you should have on your credit report? And it's really between you know one one and three. That's the real numbers. If you don't want to look too crazy out there for other lenders to see. Mm. Now, I'll give you another gem, right? So, um, the Chase Bank rule. I'm sure you guys heard of the whole Chase Bank rule. I have not. I no, I have Chase and I have not. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, no, you, no, 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 no. We, are, we are the people that come in with the Facts. frequently asked Facts. questions. Facts. No, no. Dame, no. Dame lo que un vaso, por favor. 524. All right? So, it's 524 means you can't apply more than five times in 24 months. Mm. So, now, if you do that, Chase will deny your application even if you have a 750 credit score. Doesn't matter. Whoa, time out, time out, time out. So you're telling, me that, so you're telling me that even if I have a good credit, if I have applied more than five times in the last... 24 months. 24 months? Yeah. It's a no-no for it's me. It's a no-no. Why is that and where does that come from? That comes from the Chase Bank rule. So um, they see things that uh, some other banks don't see. Uh, and they're tier, they're tier one bank. So they're very respectable, well-known, of course. So the thing is that... Different banks follow other systems, but they almost follow similar with what Chase has as, as the grandfather of this thing. Right? Mm. And basically, they don't want to see that somebody applied 20, 10, 15 times to different lenders looking desperate. So it's not it's not a good look, guys. No, it's not a good Again, look. Again, you know, so we want to kind of like minimize that as much as possible. Now, I'll tell you one thing for sure. If you um, apply for, let's just say, a credit card you got through Bank of America or anything like that, uh, TD, right? And you got through and it shows on your credit report, fine. So be it. Let it be. Let it rock out until it falls off. Because it's something called statute of limitation. So in 24 months, they do fall off, by the way, guys. But don't go too crazy by, you know, uh, applying to so many different places all at once in a short short time, you know, window. Mm. That doesn't look good on your record. What would you say is the, the perfect amount of applying in the specific time, like a window? Um, I would say, in my opinion, the way I look at things, uh, if you're going to go for one credit card, sure, you start off the year... Go for that one credit card. But first, obviously, make sure the credit score is decent. You don't want to be applying with 500 credit scores because you ain't going to go nowhere with 500 guys. You know what I'm saying? It ain't good enough. So, you know, you can start somewhere at 660, somewhere around there, at least to get you somewhere in the door. And then, you know, bring it up from there and then eventually reapply three months later to mm-hmm. a different, um, you know, different credit card company and see where the credit score is at by then. Or you can ask for that credit limit increase. We go back to that. You know, however you want to play your. So there's you there's de- there's, de- there's different. They're running ways. your yeah, credit yeah. again when you when you ask for the increase, you know. Well, the only time they won't run it, 
as far as adding an inquiry is if you don't have a fraud alert. Mm. Me, guys? So if you're not doing fraud, yeah. people stop doing fraud. Yeah. You don't have that fraud alert on your on your credit report. You're good to go with no inquiry. Mm. But if you do, you're done. It's definitely going to add on your your profile, and you need to have your file not frozen. You know, so people be, do become um, identity theft victims. Okay, I have heard it many times. It's probably somebody right now as we're speaking. Right, you know, a lot yeah, of yeah. It's going through this. So the I used thing, to get that a lot when I used to work at T-Mobile. Yeah, there you go. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You know, so um, the thing is that when these things are happening, people do freeze their files. You know, and it's like a temporary freeze. But it's only be to protect their identity. From yeah, they block it. Yeah. Yeah. So now they have to call to uh, activate it again. Exactly. It takes like twenty four hours. There you go. Now, how can somebody avoid that? Right? Like, how do you avoid like getting your identity theft? Like, because now, right? If I'm trying to apply for a credit card, let's say, right, I have to put some sort of sensitive information into that, right? Yeah. Like, what would you recommend people to do or not do, right, uh -huh. to protect their identity when it comes to that stuff? I'm going to ask you this. Whose Wi-Fi are you using to, to begin, first of all? you know, Is it your Wi-Fi or, some, or somebody else's Wi-Fi? Is it a public Wi-Fi? You never know with these Wi-Fis, guys. Be careful with them Wi-Fis. It all starts there. Yo, also create Wi-Fi de mi casa. Yeah. De mi casa. De mi casa. Oh, y el de Mama Juana, pero... Y cuidado, que, que a veces ni lo uso. Pero no, pero no para play... Pero no para play... Pero no para play... He's saying when you're applying for these things, yeah. when you're putting your numbers in, yeah, whose Wi-Fi are you using? Yeah. It's when you're guys. doing the thing. If you're yeah, doing the thing... It. With that Wi-Fi, that the, the the cookies store, bro. Yeah, yeah. The cookie jar is stored with your info. Yeah. Listen, in the book, I give you ten different scenarios, ten different scenarios how how people become victim of identity theft without mm. even giving physically anything to people, just by tapping the numbers and nowhere it's going. And then something called phishing, also, you know, where not phishing like phishing. I'm talking about a different phishing guys, mm. where you know you're getting caught in these web things and uh, dark webs, whatever you call it, and it looks like the real legit ones, and then it's not. You get caught up with your information compromised. Doom, done. So, yeah, I talk about all those little things, guys. So, you know, it always starts there. Know where you're doing. To try to do it, obviously, number one, in your home. where it's, it's a secure network. And then eventually, yes, you type your personal information there. And you don't save any cookies or anything like that. You you always clear everything. Clear yeah. cache, clear history, clear everything. Yeah. Another another thing, I think I think this is going to be a good information. You let me know if it's not. Also, if you use the actual app from these companies, like from the banks and all that stuff, it's directly to the bank unless you're using the fucked up Wi-Fi. Exactly. Because it's not a website. They can't copy an app that you already downloaded a long time ago. It's exactly. It's tough. All right. Um, where can we find your book? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, where can people buy it? I just, I, I just got the, the, the Kindle version. Yo, everybody got to make some noise. Claro, 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 claro. Com compré el Kindle version, tú supiste. Highlight y le di, le di, oye, read. By yo y lo, porque no me gusta leer mucho. Dime. No facts. Need some review too, man. I, 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 I got you, I got you with the review. I got you. Yo le voy a un review. Let's go. Inglés, español, dámelo. Hasta en francés. Let's go, man. Hasta en francés, te digo. So, so where, where can we get the book? All right, so you get the book at Amazon for sure. You know, Kindle is available. Uh, it's, it's quick, easy, downloadable, very quick and fast. Uh, and of course, you get the hard cover, uh, the hard copy, which is a. Uh, it's this one right here. This is in English. This one's in Spanish. I brought both first. Apuntalo right a la camarita ahí. Para que la gente lo vea. Ahí, heavy. Ahí está. Tenemos el inglés y el español ahí disponible. Yeah. Ya ustedes saben, cuando lo ordenen ahí a través de Amazon, tienen el Kindle. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy read. Um, so, you know, if you guys want to get the information. Um, so, está muy duro, está muy duro, muy duro. Ahí está. Para la gente que le gusta leer y tener el libro físico, más en el físico, Para los que les gustan la vaina digital, van en el digital. People that like the physical books, get the physical book. The people that like the digital books, get the digital book. Lo dije en dos idiomas porque el libro está en tres idiomas. El otro no me lo sé. No bonjour. puedo decirle. Bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah. bonjour. Mánganlo bonjour. en bonjour. Si tú hablas bonjour, mánganlo en bonjour. Normal. Bueno, the credit mogul, Marlon Peña en la casa. Marlon, Marlon, tengo una pregunta, hermano mío. Para cerrar aquí. Yo sé que este libro es como pa, para en, entrar al crédito. Para con una persona que no sea de crédito como nosotros, entrar a crédito y saber más información sobre crédito con este libro. En el futuro, ¿estás tratando de hacer otro libro para avanzar tu crédito, tu credit knowledge? Como que yo sé que esto es para beginners como nosotros, pero... Hay que hacer uno para los tigres que ya están en el medio. Porque ya ahí son los tigres que quieren comprar un building para hacer más cuarto. ¿Tú me entiendes? Es más bacano los flow. Claro. Exacto. So, eso es lo que yo estaba pensando para, para 2025. Nada, nada, porque yo todavía tengo no, que... No, porque ya te comenzó ya ahora. Se el año ya. You know, uh, 2024, yo voy a poner un plan para eso y vamos a ver qué pasa. Pero 
Yo voy a ser como el DJ Khaled del libro ahora que yo... Another one. Another one. <laughs> Another one baby. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Get the first one, though, first. Get the first one. ¿Cuánto cuesta? $12.99. Está barato. Get Pero the first aguántate. One. Y para los Kindle, los Kindle son como 8 pesos, ¿no? Normal, pesos, el digital, 8 que... pesos, lo... pero mangan el físico para que le des un par de pesos bacanos, mangalo. Mangan... Son 4 pesos más. Y ya. Manga el de 12. Normal. No, pero si tú quieres mangar los dos y ya, sale de eso. Si tú eres bacano de verdad. <risa> eh, no, no, pero si eres bacano de verdad. Si tú hablas inglés y español, tú compras el de inglés en digital uh -huh. y el español en físico para que se lo dé a la abuela y a toda la eso. familia. Exacto. Pero el inglés tú lo. Digo yo, yo no sé, yo no sé. Yo no sé de crédito. Yo lo que sé es que si tú le mangas eso, el crédito del va a estar caro en los bolsillos. <risa> ¡Ya! ¡Hablamos! Yo soy Creepy Films. Yo soy Jorge al aire. Y estamos aquí con Marro Peña. ¡Hablamos el martes! Aplausos. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good.